RFID, uh, which was originally made for a commercial reader, but then uh, we quickly ported it to our reader. Um, and uh, by the way, he also made a very nice library for reading uh, uh, travel, electronic travel documents, uh, with, uh, which is uh, stacks on top on libRFID. So the nice thing on this 32-bit ARM processor is that you can, it allows standalone operation. So uh, Harold ported libRFID to um, this 32-bit uh, ARM processor and it runs completely self-contained within uh, our reader if you want. Usually you use uh, the dump reader firmware image which just forwards requests for application software because it's uh, easier to debug. But as soon uh, as your system is working, you can just by cross-compiling it, you can run it uh, inside uh, uh, the reader itself. So just by powering over battery, you, you have a mobile reader that doesn't need a laptop and stuff like that. Um, and for those that have the equipment, but uh, I personally uh, didn't use it, uh, you can even uh, debug uh, with a JTAG interface and uh, there are some uh, extension uh, uh, ports where you can add your own hardware, for example, if you want to create the door security system and stuff like that. So um, the idea to, in, uh, to make the security relations easier is that uh, we made uh, possible that uh, we can sample each data that is transmitted on the RF interface uh, synchronously to the um, carrier because uh, this is part of more sta most standards that uh, you have to reply within this and this uh, carrier cycles and so on. So uh, to remove this problem from software, uh, we just uh, uh, use the internal timer to uh, divide uh, the uh, carrier frequency down to any level you want. You can shift the phase uh, wherever you want. And the DMA uh, system makes sure that uh, the bits are precisely sampled at the time uh, you intend. Um, and uh, same goes uh, for uh, uh, outgoing uh, signals. So basically this uh, RC632 provides a mode where you can just toggle uh, one of its I.O. pins and create any bit pattern you want as a modulation. Um, so this means that uh, the reader can be used to uh, talk to any proprietary card as soon as, lo uh, as, soon as you uh, know how the protocol works. So as soon as you find out how the protocol works, you don't need a proprietary reader for the specific card, but you can uh, reprogram OpenPCD uh, to support this particular card, even uh, uh, when it's not supported by the RC 632 um, and uh, for checking the performance of your homebrew antennas, there is a mode where you can send out constant modulation patterns so you see how smooth your edges are and uh, uh, how, uh, how high the bit rates are that are supported by your um, antenna because uh, f uh, there are some beginner mistakes where you add too high capacitors and your old data is uh, eroded uh, to nothing so you don't see anything. So with this tool you have uh, serial terminal where you can toggle the uh, speeds and uh, the modulation depths. So you see, for example, if you are all able to sniff what's pretty hairy, this uh, B-type uh, cards. Um, okay, and the counterpart is open PICC. Uh, just to make it cool, make sure that it is also RFID card size and it is intended to be uh, accurate uh, emulation of a uh, passive RFID card and uh, to make it easier we uh, just uh, used external power supply in this case uh, the USB connector and uh, so we can afford a much faster processor than it's usually used inside uh, this RFID cards because we have our own power supply and the reader doesn't uh, see the difference so again there is the very same processor the 32-bit ARM uh, uh, based CPU uh, with uh, basically the same operating system. Again, standalone uh, operation is possible, so as long as you find out how the system works, you implement in software, you have something that is the size of an RFID card and uh, exactly looks like an RFID card. So 
thought emulation, our first goal is to emulate uh, MyFair Ultralight because this is already well documented and many systems rely on the fact that the UID can't be changed. So obviously if you emulate it in software, you can use every UID you want. And it again has RS232 uh, uh, interface like OpenPCD where you connect, uh, can connect the serial interface uh, to see what's going on and to uh, send out debug messages or provide a serial terminal for modifying the behavior. Uh, we already have a nice firmware that is the counterpart of OpenBCD where you can uh, s uh, send out uh, load modulations pattern synchronously to the carrier. So again, you can check if the uh, return communication can be also sniffed accurately by your setup. Um, Again, it has a JTAG debug interface. You just have to s uh, solder a 20-pin header to it and uh, I2C for custom extensions. Um, and I don't, uh, I think I don't go deeper into it. It's the very same. You have, again, DMA acceleration. You have uh, to uh, narrow down the data. Uh, we quickly convert it uh, into binary levels. Uh, we have a DA converter that creates a compare voltage and everything that's above the voltage res will, result in, uh, will re uh, result in a 1. Everything that is below the voltage will uh, result in 0. So uh, you can, if you try to uh, sniff on longer ranges, you can adjust the threshold. Um, again, you can send uh, free bit patterns at DMA accelerated. The only difference is that um, the RFID card completely relies on the carrier clock. Um, everything has to be done synchronously. And uh, to get the same pictures when sniffing, uh, like you see in the books and on oscilloscope, we made sure that the carrier uh, is still uh, is, um, simulated during modulation pauses. Because if you have no modulation, then you have obviously no carrier. Then uh, you can't, for example, clock your DMA. So we made sure that we added a PLL that it's always stopped uh, when there is a modulation pause, but uh, during the modulation pause it uh, provides ongoing the very same frequency like before. And afterwards, when the modulation pause is over, the uh, PLL again adjusts uh, to the carrier. Uh, and this makes sure if you sniff that you see the very same waveforms of the demodulated signal like uh, on your oscilloscope. Um, we already have nice application software. Uh, for logging and decoding uh, RFID uh, reader to tag communication um, with OpenPICC. So this uh, basically, uh, you can see it on our website, there is a short introduction how to use OpenPICC to sniff uh, reader to tag communication. Um, okay, and uh, interesting, obviously it's interesting to combine both uh, devices. You can, if you combine them, uh, com uh, connect them by using this TTL-based serial interface, um, uh, they can talk to each other and you can, press, uh, press, uh, you can create a device that can read, uh, for example, my fair ultralight card and as soon as we have the emulation profile, uh, OpenP ICC can emulate the very same card and you don't need any computer hardware for this. So you can get a handheld device where you just point and mm -hmm and you have a copy of the card and uh, you can use it like a card. But as I uh, uh, said, uh, we currently work on the anti-collosion still. It's uh, had a very low prior, uh, priority in the last months because we're busy with other projects. Uh, but as soon as we have the anti-collosion, it's very simple to uh, create emulated cards because the, basically the only uh, real-time critical part uh, on the card reader, reader card transaction is the anti-collosion. As soon as anti-collosion is over, it's uh, even possible to do the higher level communication directly uh, over your PC. So basically OpenPICC can uh, emulate the time critical parts and for development purposes you can uh, run the uh, emulation profile on your PC and you can debug it and uh, whatever. And as soon as you verify that your emulation image works, you can cross-compile it again and have it run inside uh, OpenPICC. Uh, we currently, the users we had for OpenPICC, we used together the encrypted uh, MyFair uh, communication you saw before. 
And uh, what we want to do, because we are not uh, cryptographers at all, we have basically no clue <laughs> about this, we want to make it possible for others that have no clue about hardware to get the uh, computer data with the proper bytecodes, with the verified CRCs, and uh, to run crypto analysis against it. And to our opinion, we provide a huge stack of sampled um, transactions with known keys, and uh, I think this is a good start for the cryptographic community to crypto analyze uh, this algorithm, and then we found out, find out uh, how secure it actually is. Um, also nice feature is uh, the anti-collusion. Uh, basically, you already saw it in Hendrik's part. Uh, is used to uh, singularize uh, one card of many. So the practical limit with real cards is that with a given amount of cards, the reader field uh, isn't strong enough anymore to support uh, the cards, even when they are sleeping. Uh, um, but uh, with OpenPRCC, you can have one device that looks like, say, 1,000 cards or 1 million cards or 1 billion cards. So if the reader still tries to check uh, the whole tree of cards, then it obviously breaks and <laughs> it's basically some kind of denial of service attack. So this could be a nice uh, protection device. But uh, others uh, done already very nice work in this area. Maybe Henrik want to explain? Yeah, we had that at the last Congress, the um, RFID Guardian, if I remember correctly, from the um, group of, um, uh, from Amsterdam, um, Melanie Ryback uh, held a presentation. You can look it up in the uh, Congress archives. They have a device for this purpose. Okay, and also very nice um, use for open PSDCs because all the stuff uh, is um, done in uh, software. Um, you can change every aspect of the protocol. You can add one bit at the end. You can uh, change uh, the, the length of the UID. You can try to break the anti-collusion. And uh, it would be very nice to implement the fuzzing suite uh, with uh, OpenPICC, uh, which could test for uh, errors uh, in uh, the reader firmware because usually in current RFID readers, the reader firmware is very high level. It already does a lot of stuff. And uh, usually the uh, application level software relies that uh, the underlying reader software has done a proper job. But as you know, uh, shit happens. So this would be also nice use for open PICC. So our to-do list. Uh, we want to get finally anti-collusion running. It's <laughs> uh, very important to uh, do any emulation at all. Uh, uh, we could do without anti-collusion, but then it's no proper RFID card uh, because uh, you would basically make some assumptions that are only true for particular readers. So we definitely need uh, anti-collusion to make it uh, uh, usable for generic use. Uh, like I said, provide tons of samples for people that are not so good in hardware and uh, uh, gathering all the samples, but they are much better in mathematics and cryptanalysis to get them something to work with. And we are very open, for example, if uh, you have specific requirements for uh, keys uh, you want to get samples, we will sample them for you. So just send us the keys you want to get the cryptographic transaction for we will make uh, the samples for you, so don't worry. Uh, you can uh, do it in your favorite tools and you don't need to touch any hardware at all. We will help you gladly, because we can't do it at all. Um, yeah, and uh, we came to the conclusion that uh, uh, OpenPCD is uh, maybe a very nice tool, but uh, we found out that only very few people actively participate in the development. And uh, we think the problem is that our, uh, we wrote basically our own operating system. And we uh, think that maybe this distracts people from learning another operating system again and to dive into our uh, hack code. So uh, as we did already for uh, Open the Beacon project, we now use uh, publicly available operating system called FreeRTOS, which is very, very cool. You have it has a very small footprint. You can do multitasking. You have semaphores. You have everything 
you did, uh, want uh, and you 